This Golden Fox boot is a very highly requested boot because it's only $96 and Amazon really pushes this boot anytime you search for work boots or leather boots, mock toe boots. So I'm curious, if, are they actually a good deal or is it just one of these things where Amazon's pushing really cheap junk to sell a lot more and get more money from people? Well, we're gonna cut this thing in half, run it through the test to really determine if you can get a decent mock toe boot from Amazon for under a hundred bucks or are you just buying straight junk? And this year for Mocktober, we're doing a lot more of the affordable Mocto boots because I want to find what is the best value Mocto boot you can buy under like 250 bucks. And a lot of people that really need these boots and rely on them for work, they don't want to spend 600 bucks. They want to spend under 200, under 300 bucks for their work boots each year. And it's a category that often gets neglected by myself and a lot of other reviewers. And so that's why I really want to figure out what's the best value Mocto boot in this more affordable price range. And thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. If you don't know, they make the best standing desks in the world. How do I know that? Because I bought the cheap standing desks and they're absolutely terrible. So why do you need a standing desk? Well, for me, it's great to stretch my legs all day. I'm just not an office person. I just don't do well sitting in a chair all day every day because I get, I'm so, tall. I just have the worst posture ever. And so having a standing desk allows me to stretch my legs, get some blood flow going. It doesn't completely destroy my hips and back from sitting all day. And you can kind of actively stretch and move around while you're working instead of being in one single goblin-like stance. I don't stand all day. I'm not that type of guy, but just being able to stand up every once in a while, get that blood flow going, it definitely wakes me back up. And especially the editors, because I just poked my head into their office to see if anyone was actually using their standing desk. And one out of the three is. And part of that's because it's super easy easy to use, it's really stable. I'm six foot four and most of the standing desks and other just stuff generally doesn't fit me. But these flexi spot desks, they raise super high to a point where I don't even max it out. I still drop it a little bit below its max. So if you don't have a standing desk, check out flexi spot. They provide all kinds of standing desks and ergonomic chairs to meet your demands. And if you want a standing desk with a T-frame, you can check out the E7 basic frame. If you're on a limited budget, you can check out the E2. It only costs 150 bucks and you can get the basic standing functions. And on top of that, you can use the promo code YTB30 for $30 off an order over 500 bucks. So check them out below and thanks again to FlexiSpot. And as for the history of Golden Fox, there really isn't much out there about this company. They say on their website that they've been making boots since 1970, but who knows if that's true. You know, a lot of times these brands, they claim they've been making boots for like 40, 50 years, but in all reality, they bought a brand that was making them for a long time. And so they claim that heritage, but in all reality, they've only been doing it for a few years. I don't know if that's true, but there's just not a lot of information out there on Golden Fox. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Golden Fox. The style is the Mock Toe Wedge Pro. They weigh one pound, eight ounces. They retail for $96 on Amazon and they're made in China. And the way that they position this boot is it features our signature polyurethane outsole offering shock absorption comfort and dependable performance. This boot is built with a premium oil tanned leather upper, making it an ideal choice for those seeking a rugged work boot. The U-shaped toe derives from the Native American moccasin, stitching two leather pieces together and forming a braided looking design. Right off the bat, they're off on that one because this is a single piece mock toe. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go check out the everything you need to know about mock toe boots on the Roseanne with two channel, I'll put it in the description. But they're saying that this is has a top piece, which is the U-shape and the sidewall, and they sew those together like typical mock toes. That's not true with this. It's a single piece that just has this rib around it. It's not the biggest crime. It's just misinformation on their end. They, I think they just maybe don't know as much about boots as they claim to know. What about this oil tan premium leather they're talking about? Well, it is. it actually is a pretty nice leather, if I'm being honest, because I expect it for a $100 boot for it to be absolutely terrible leather. But it's two millimeters thick. It is an oil tan leather. It has a lot of this pull-up that you usually only see in a higher quality leather. You know, pull-up is where when you bend the leather, it, it lightens up. It's, a, it's evidence of a higher quality leather that doesn't have a plastic coating on top, doesn't have pigment on top, and enough oil and conditioning and tanning compounds are worked into it that as you bend it, it lightens up because you're creasing the waxes and everything. So pretty good leather, honestly. So we burned it just to double check and there's no plastic on top. We put the cross section macro lens on it. There's plenty of grain in there. It probably is a light, lightly sanded on top. But for the most part, it's a pretty good leather. Even the punctured test, it did 143 pounds. So I did not expect to have this high quality of leather on a $100 boot. So maybe the rest of the boot was absolute garbage and all the money went into the upper. Because once we start looking at the inside, that's where we start to see some of the cheaper materials because this boot is lined up the shaft with basically
basically a, a sneaker lining. Something on the inside is causing bumps and lumps in between the lining and the upper. And so I would have much rather have seen no lining in the shaft and a dedicated counter cover rather than a cheap sneaker lining. But keep in mind, this is a $96 boot and it's uh, pretty common for this price range to see a, a fabric lining. Then if we pull the insole out, just a typical insole, it's not horrible, it's not spectacular, just an average foam insole. The lasting material used underneath the insole is a really, really cheap fiberboard. But the interesting thing is there's a stitch line going around the inside of this boot that's very similar to a Blake stitch. So it's making me question, is this truly a Goodyear welted boot? or is it Blake stitch or what is that stitch for? So we'll see when we get it cut in half. But speaking of the construction, if I pull this upper away from the welt to try to see if it is truly a Goodyear welt construction, which is a traditional way of making this style of boot where instead of just glue holding this whole thing together, there's sewing and stitching that holds all the integral parts together and fastens them together as well as glues them. And a lot of times you can just pull away that upper and see if they're stitching or if it's glued, but this one, I cannot tell. I think it might, I think it might be a Blake stitch construction. I don't know if this is a true Goodyear welt, which is pretty common for this price range to have a fake Goodyear welt because a lot of people for a hundred bucks, they'd rather just buy a brand new pair every year rather than paying 75 bucks to have it resold. So we'll really see when you get it cut in half. Is it Blake stitch? Is it Goodyear welted? And you have, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we'll put two diagrams up here so you can compare and contrast. They're, they're similar, but most people prefer Goodyear welted. Then if we look at the final piece that we haven't talked about, the outsole, this is a polyurethane outsole and it's made to look like the Vibram outsoles and the Thoroughgood outsoles, but it's just a cheaper foam outsole. It's fairly soft at a 50 shore A, so it's gonna give you lots of squish underfoot and it could be decently durable because it is polyurethane, but you just never know with these outsoles. They either fall apart super quick or they're durable and that's the gamble you take with cheaper boots, you just never know. But they do claim that it is acid and oil resistant, non-marking, slip resistant, and comfort insole. <laughs> I love how they have the comfort insole marking on the outsole of the boot, nice touch. And the welt on this boot, whether it's real or not, is a synthetic welt, which people prefer a leather welt because it doesn't crack and split as often. Not sure about the construction, but this seems to be different from the vast majority of cheap Amazon products, like literally even this remote. I'm recording this and this stupid little Amazon clicker remote for my talking points, it breaks like every other day, the battery's always running out. And the problem is you can't get decent quality stuff on Amazon because so many of these brands just drive the price down so much that decent quality products can't compete. And that's what my fear is with this boot. So let's cut these in half and really find out. All right, we got it cut in half and it's time to figure out if Golden Fox is lying about their construction or if they're telling the truth and this is actually a pretty decent boot. So let's see what's inside. So is this a true Goodyear welted boot? Yes, it is. It surprised me. I thought for sure that we, we had busted them lying about their construction. So what is that stitch on the inside on this insole right here? Well, that is a stitch to reinforce the gimming that's underneath the insole. And that gimming is a little ridge that the welt is sewn through to connect the insole to the welt. And the welt connects that down to the midsole. And that's that three-way or I guess two-way sewing that makes this such a strong construction. So in all reality, it's a pretty smart way of reinforcing a cheap boot by throwing that stitch line around the gimmick. I honestly thought it was gonna be the opposite. I thought it was gonna be a cemented boot with a lot of fake stitches and maybe like a Blake stitch, but for 96 bucks, that's really not bad. You can also see there's a foam filling that fills up that void that's caused by the gimming. You can see that it's a pretty cheap counter. This is just a fiberboard counter. But I also figured out what that weird crumbly thing was going between two layers. And it's just the, the lining foam. It is the absolute worst foam that I've seen in a brand new boot. It's already crumbled all over the place. You can see it just dumps out. And this is from, we haven't even really worn these. We took like B-roll with them and we cut them, but the whole inside is just crumbling apart. So is this boot worth 96 bucks? I did not think that I would say it was when I started planning this video and everything. I was like, there's no way you can get a decent $100 boot from Amazon. But in all reality, 
I think it is worth a hundred bucks. I wouldn't say it's worth more than a hundred bucks. Maybe, maybe like 125, but you can get decent leather from a boot from Amazon for a hundred bucks. And this is definitely not a work boot. It's more of a casual boot. You could work in them, but you're better off saving another 50 to a hundred dollars to get something that you can actually depend on. You know, you can trust, tr trust whether it's the Irish setters that we cut apart, the Carolinas for a little bit more money we cut apart last year. But if you're on a tight budget, it's really not bad for a hundred bucks. Like if you just need a quick work boot or a casual boot, or if you're trying to get into this heritage boot world and you're just, instead of spending three, 400 bucks, you want to try it out. This gives you the look, it gives you the feel, and it's a good trial boot for a hundred bucks. I'm actually pleasantly surprised at this boot. It's far from perfect. It's far from worth more than a hundred bucks, but you do definitely get a decent boot for a hundred bucks. So how does this rank on the Mocktober board? Well, for this year, I'm putting it above the Portland leather goods, their patina boot and below the Irish setter. And I think that's a pretty fair uh, judgment, especially compared to that Portland leather boot. If you haven't seen that, they're claiming it's good as five or $600 boots and it's literally worse than this boot. And uh, as for the overall Mocktober board, I would put this underneath the Carolinas and above the Nike Kingman because the Nike Kingman was built really similar, similarly, but it has a lot worse leather. And so I, I think that's, that's where I'm gonna put it. And at the end of this series, we'll have you guys do a community ranking and have, see how your guys' rankings compare to mine. So be on the lookout for that. And let me know what other boots you want us to cut apart for this more budget-friendly Mocktober this year. We're still gonna hit some, some expensive stuff. We got the Rock Roosters coming up next, and that'll be a really interesting comparison because they're both really cheap Amazon boots. And I think I'm gonna do a Rose Anvil 2 actually comparing the two because they are very popular boots with people that are on a budget who wanna try these boots out or need a cheap work boot. So thank you guys for everything you do and for supporting these videos and our small leather goods business where we make handmade leather wallets and belts and everything else that gives us the information and the knowledge that I've gained over the years to be able to judge these boots like this. So thank you guys. See ya.